Hi there! After this lesson, you should be able to write a linear equation from a graph in the form y equals mx plus b. Sophia joined the winter reading challenge at her local library. If she can read 12 pages per day for the month of February, she will be entered into a grand prize drawing. Well, what does this mean for Sophia? On the first day, she will read 12 pages. On the second, 12 more. That is 24 altogether. How many will she have read after day 5? Or day 10? What about day 28? Instead of counting that high, we can write an equation in slope-intercept form where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Let's see how this works. We will first take a look at the slope. It is just the number that describes the steepness of a line. Is it really steep or more of a walk in the park? I'll be going into more detail about this in the next unit. Let's talk about how we find it. Well, we represent slope with the letter m, and we can think of it as the rise over the run, or how much do you have to rise and how much do you have to run to get from one point to another on the graph? Rise over run, or the change in y over the change in x. This is represented by the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. To use the formula, we pick any two points. Any two points from the graph will do. We will pick 2, 2, and 6, 4. Now remember each of these is just an ordered pair, and in each ordered pair there is an x and a y. There are two points, so we can think of the first point as having the first x and y, x1 and y1, and the second point as having the second x and y, or x2, y2. We then plug these numbers into our formula. 4 minus 2 is 2, and 6 minus 2 is 4. We can simplify this, reducing this fraction to 1 half. Our slope, or m, is 1 half. Okay, you give it a try. Here are two points. Find the slope of the line that contains them. Alright, let's start by writing down our formula, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We will denote the first ordered pair as being x1 and y1, and the second as x2 and y2. We will now plug these values into our formula. 2 minus negative 5 is 7, and 8 minus 4 is equal to 4. The slope of the line that passes through these points is 7 fourths. Okay, now let's take a look at the second piece to the puzzle, the y-intercept. This is the point where the line of the graph crosses the y-axis. If you look at the graph, it is the point right here. The y-intercept is represented with the letter b. To find this number, we start with the general equation of a line in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. You can see the y-intercept, b is the last value there. To find it, we will plug in any known information we have about the line to make substitutions in the formula. In this case, we know the slope, or m, is equal to 1 half. And we can also pick any point, or xy coordinate, from the graph. Let's pick 6, 4. Great, so I will rewrite my equation with 1 half in place of m, and the point 6 and 4 in the place of x and y. Now, we must solve for b. 1 half times 6 equals 3. Now, subtract 3 from both sides to get b equal to 1. The line of this graph passes through the y-axis at 1. The ordered pair is 0, 1. Now you try. Find the y-intercept of the line that has a slope of 3 fourths and passes through the point 4, 8. Okay, remember, we first start with the general form of an equation in slope-intercept form, or y equals mx plus b. We can substitute 3 fourths for m, 4 for x, 
and 8 for y. Now we can solve for b. 4 times 3 fourths is 3. We can subtract 3 from both sides to get b equal to 5. This means that the line passes through 5 on the y-axis. Great. Now let's take a look at our original example. We have now found both slope and y-intercept, so we can put it together to form the equation of this line. Remember, the general form is y equals mx plus b. We know that our slope is 1 half and our y-intercept is 1. This gives us an equation of y equals 1 half x plus 1. This is the equation of our line in slope-intercept form. Okay, remember when we were trying to figure out how many pages Sophia read after 28 days? Well, go ahead and write an equation to represent the situation. The data is on the left. Remember to first find slope and y-intercept. Okay, remember to first start by finding the slope or finding the rise over the run. The formula for this is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. To solve, I need any two points from the graph. I'll choose 112 and 336. Okay, we will then rewrite the equation using these values. 36 minus 12 is 24, and 3 minus 1 is 2. Reduce this to get m equal to 12. For the y-intercept, we start with the general equation of a line in slope-intercept form. I will replace the slope of 12 for m along with the values of x and y. I chose to use the point 1, 12. 12 times 1 is 12. Then I subtract 12 from both sides to get a y-intercept of 0. We are almost there. To write the equation, we will replace 12 for slope and 0 for y-intercept. This is the same as y equals 12x. Lastly, let's figure out how many pages she reads after 28 days. First, we will want to use the equation we found for this data. Then, we can plug in 28 for x to see that she read a total of 336 pages in 28 days. Great job! Lastly, what is a linear equation? A linear equation is just an equation that forms a straight line when graphed. You'll notice that all of the graphs we encountered in this lesson were linear. Take a look at a few more. Can you identify all of the graphs that represent a linear equation? Take a moment to jot your answer down. Okay, let's take a look. If I draw a line through the points on graph A, I see a straight line appear. Therefore, this graph does represent a linear equation. The line on graph B is also a straight line and therefore also represents a linear equation. Lastly, the line on graph C is curved and therefore does not represent a linear equation. Good work! Mm -hmm.